Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the land geek with their favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's guest is really going to help blow up, blows up your marketing. But I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host. You know him. You love him. Six Sigma. He closed 197 deals last year. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Hey, Mark. I'm great. How are you? Um, pulse is still normal. Respiration's fine. Had my bulletproof coffee uh, this morning. I'm, I'm really excited to talk to our guest um, selfishly. Like, I, like, this is the kind of like podcast where um, we could just privately talk to our guests and, and, and we would benefit from it. But we'll be, we'll be unselfish and share him with the world. You don't want to hold this to ourselves. I mean, I do, but I don't. Yeah. yeah. You know, I have, I have abundance mentality. I fight it every day. I fight it every day. Scarce mentality is something that comes naturally. But I, I, you know, you have to have abundance mentality. I think ultimately you feel better. The world's better. It all, it all comes back. It's a boomerang. It's a boomerang. Do you agree? Yeah, I, I do agree. I do agree. All right. So let's talk to our guest. Are you ready? Let's go. All right. I just want to mention to everybody that today's podcast is sponsored by Loan Geek. LoanGeek.io. Set it and forget it. Automate your payments. It's going to actually end up making you money because let's face it, it's going to save you time. Time is money. Do you like that, Scott Todd? How's that for a commercial? I, I think it's a great commercial. I, you know, I'm glad you didn't go into grandpa mode and eh, back in the day, I used to do this on Sunday. It's all yeah. good. All right. Brandon Lucero. If you don't know who Brandon is, he is the CEO and the owner of soldwithvideo.com. Brandon has been part of numerous web-based companies over the last eight years. He started early by building, growing, and selling websites while attending UC Irvine. And some of those sites even reached 20,000 unique visitors in a day. With a wide portfolio ranging from humor to information sites, he's bought, created, flipped, and developed numerous sites throughout his time in college. After leaving UC Irvine, he began working for a video marketing company at a local daily deal site based in Southern California. He quickly became VP of production of the video marketing company, where he held that position for three years before starting soldwithvideo.com. Since founding soldwithvideo.com, he's been helping small businesses increase their local advertising through video marketing while keeping it extremely affordable. When not at the soldwithvideo.com offices, working on his or clients' businesses, and Brandon enjoys backpacking, mountain biking, cycling, camping, running, watching movies, and hiking. Brandon Lucero, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad, uh, glad to be here. So thanks for having me on. Um, let's talk about your job, VP of production. Um, tell us how you got out of that and you started so with video. So I, I, it was one of those things where I've always had the entrepreneurial spirit and um, I got into this job and I got very comfortable there. So it kind of killed my entrepreneurial spirit and um, it's kind of a blessing in the skies, but the company just started to go under like it, clients were leaving and it, it was kind of falling apart and paychecks were coming in late and um, it really put me in a bad spot. And I was at to the point where I didn't know how bills were going to be paid sometimes because I was, there was like back paychecks and it was just a really, really bad spot. So uh, it kind of forced me out uh, and starting sold with video. And so I kind of just ventured out on my own, I'm on my own. Cause it just, it wasn't working anymore. I mean, you can't, you can't pay bills off of um, false promises and Hey, can I pay you in three weeks instead of today? So that's, it. I was kind of forced out. Okay. So you get forced out. And then what walk us through the, the sort of the business plan of, you know, your market niche and why video, why not AdWords or, you know, Facebook marketing like everybody else is doing. Right. Why video? So 
I actually didn't really have a business plan when I got started. I just knew I wanted to go out on my own. And uh, I followed Pat Flynn from Smart Passive Income for a while when I first got started. And he was talking about niche sites and how you can like do these little authority sites and rank them in the search engines and, you know, make passive income with AdSense. And I actually, that's what I did for the first six months out on my own. And I built it up to almost $1,000 a month of just reoccurring totally passive income until the Google, you know, shifted their algorithm and then it was wiped out overnight. Um, so then I didn't really know what to do. So I kind of fell back onto video because that's what I knew. I've been doing it for the last few years, uh, running the production team. And, and so I was like, oh, this is going to be easy. I'm just going to focus in on real estate. It was actually where I started just working with listing videos and agent profile videos and all that stuff. And we, we since expanded from that point, but uh, I kind of fell back into it because I was just like, I don't know what to do, but at least I know video. So let's go down that route. And then it was another two years of struggling uh, until I finally got all the pieces working together. Um, I was lucky enough to have my wife support us for two years. We ended up moving in with my in-laws and living with them uh, and living there for, for a few years while I started the business. But yeah, that's, that's kind of how I left and and got into back into video. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? Uh, many, many thoughts. You know, I, I think that, I think you, you have a kind of a cool story and a cool, um, you know, a cool path that you took. Why, um, like what, what was the biggest challenge I think that you, you ran into in terms of kind of getting your traction in that, that two year period? Yeah. So, for me, I, I was a little naive in thinking that if, as long as I had a website that talked about my services and had a buy button, uh, I would not need to, like the clients would come in. I, I didn't understand how to really sell and that selling was everything and that without the sales, you don't have a business. And so um, I'm really introverted, which is why I love the idea of doing those niche sites. I'm like, oh, cool. I can make money online and sit back and I don't have to talk to anyone or do anything. And I kind of held that approach going into business and then just quickly realized that like, I need to learn how to sell. I, uh, my prices were too low also. So I needed to raise my prices because I was, the clients that I did have, it felt like I was constantly like doing work, but it's still wondering where all the money was. Um, so I just needed a couple lessons in business and I had to go through those lessons the hard way and figure out like, okay, I need to price things a little bit differently. I need to structure the pricing plan instead of doing one-time payments. Maybe we do monthly reoccurring since we're, cause the thing is, is like, I would do work on a month to month basis for some of the clients, but I would charge them a one time upfront fee. So like making that transition helped out a lot, but really it was, um, it was really learning that like I had to put up advertising and have a sales funnel and a process and a plan for generating sales. And once I kind of realized that, which sounds, sounds kind of dumb looking back on it, it took me two years to realize that. But once I realized that and invested pretty much hundred percent of my energy in just figuring out how to generate sales, that's when things really started to, to take off for me. That was, to me, that was the biggest uh, learning curve. And as I work with students, like the biggest thing I tell them is, we, call the, we do this thing called the, the, uh, the U pyramid, where it's the activities that are the most important, which you should be spending most of your time are at the top and the traps are generally at the bottom. And at the top, it's usually sales and then processes and systems and then the product. And then it's like customer service. And then at the very bottom, it's like lo the logistics, getting your website made and getting business cards made, getting a business bank account set up, stuff like that. Um, and I was spending most of my time at the bottom of that, that pyramid for the first two years. I think that's uh, it's uh, two things you said that I think is, is kind of cool. One, you know, like getting the business set up is really should be at the bottom of the pyramid, right? Like it shouldn't be necessarily the first thing that you, you focus on. You know, it's, it's good that you go and you get the business. I mean, like business cards, who needs business cards? I mean, like that, that's a nice to have, but in today's society, you know, it's kind of like a stall tactic. I'm going to go get the business cards. I'm going to go get my logo set up or my website. It's got to be perfect. Yeah. It doesn't. And, and that's what I tell, that's what I tell a lot of the people we work with is that it, it, that those are usually things, those are traps and those are like, it's like you said, it's a stall because there's fear of taking that next step. And so what they do is you go and do these things that you feel are necessary, or, or at least that you convince yourself are necessary that are not necessary at, at all. Like some of the students that I work with, 
they say, oh, I'm going to go get my business bank account. I'm like, what are you going to put in the bank account? You haven't even closed the deal yet, you know? So, so I'm like, go, co- go close the deal, like get the money coming in. And then from there, use some of that money to sure, maybe go get a website made and, and maybe go get a logo made after you have like the balls turning. But I always tell people the most important thing you can do when you start a business is spend a hundred percent of your time on, on the sales. Like if it's not leading to more sales or products being purchased, then it may not be the best use of time right in the beginning. Now, the other thing that you, you said was you said that you were an introvert, right? Mm-hmm. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't think that someone that's an introvert would make it big in video, right? <laughs> Um, right. But I, there is a difference between being like shy or, you know, like to me, to me, like, I don't, I don't mind presenting. I don't know that I'm necessarily an extrovert. I don't mind presenting in front of a large crowd. I definitely don't mind going on a video. And, you know, I think that the biggest thing is just like getting outside your, you, you know, accepting the fact that this is what I look like. This is what I sound like. Okay. Get over it and move on. And then the video becomes just an, to me, an easier communication than really any other form. It is. And I think the easiest part about it is that, you know, for me, I just recorded videos in a room in the house by myself in front of a camera. And so for me, I'm like, cool, I don't have to talk to people. I don't have to do anything. Um, And so after doing video, after video, after video and going up on YouTube, it it just became easy. Like that's how it is with everything. There's always gonna be fear with the unknown and something new, but over time it just becomes easy and becomes normal. And so for me, that's what it, what ended up happening. Um, But the really cool thing about video is that even though I got to do it by myself, so I still kind of played into that introvert role, it allowed me to learn how to speak, present and do things like that. Now I speak on stage and it's not a problem. And I do things like if, if when I got started in business, you would tell me, Hey, you're going to be speaking on stage to hundreds of people. You're going to be doing podcasts like this. You're going to be doing live interviews on the radio. Like I would have been like, Nope, I'm done. I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing it. I, I can't. Um, but I slowly started to do that and it all started with video and learning how to present and you know, how to explain things and, and all of that stuff. So it was video was a good segue for me getting into kind of where I need needed to be and where I was going in business. So, so Brandon, when we get to video, right? Like, you know, I'm on YouTube and I've got a bunch of YouTube videos and I even keep my, my early ones up there because they're so cringeworthy and they keep me humble. Right. <laughs> I mean, they're just yep. affordable, but you know, what's interesting about that is it's not about me. It was about the value I was giving. And right. even though I look terrible, I sound terrible, my background's terrible, the lighting's terrible, the video's just terrible, right? People still got value from it because, you know, I knew what I was doing. Um, and I think that there's a lesson in that, in the fact that it's never about you. It's always about your customer. They don't care, really. Um, you care how you look, but they don't care. They just want the information. Um, so when you start, marketing with video, what are the common mistakes that you see the newbies making? The biggest mistake I think when people start with video marketing is they, they've, they think video marketing is usually direct response and it's, it's not. So you don't create a video talking about your services and be like, go buy my, my product. Video marketing, if done right, is more of a consistent thing that doesn't stop. Look at that as more of content marketing because that's what it is. It's, it's hardly ever direct response. The only time it really will ever be direct response um, is if we're talking YouTube marketing, like ranking your videos and keywords is, is for local based stuff. Like if someone's searching Los Angeles real estate agent or Los Angeles custom home builders, it's because they want to hire somebody like they're already in the buying state of mind. So in that case, it's okay to, to talk about your services, but even then you don't really want to talk about your services. You want to talk more about like their pain points. Like I, you know, things like I understand what it's like when looking for a custom home builder, you want someone that's going to be affordable. That's going to get, understand your, what you want in a home, blah, 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 blah. So you're not talking about like how long you've been in business and all these other things. You're still talking more about their problems, their benefits, their worries. So with video marketing, that's generally, the only time that I found in like my five years of doing this, that you can create a video and sell in it. 
almost any other time you want a, a strategy where you're answering questions, you're giving value up front, you're building a relationship. And then after that relationship is established, then you can do more of your direct response type stuff like, okay, want to get on our webinar or, hey, do you want to get a free X, Y, and Z, uh, whatever, to get them on an email list. Um, but really video marketing, I think, is not about selling. It's more about relationship building. And once that relationship is built, then you go and you can market to people. So I always say, if you get started with YouTube, YouTube is about adding value, building relationships so that when you do market to them outside of YouTube, they're way more responsive and it's a much easier conversion. Does that, does that make sense? It, it totally makes sense. And uh, Scott, are you thinking what I'm thinking when he mentioned keywords? Yeah. All right. So Brandon, keyword research is a whole thing. Yep. If you are a newbie and you're starting with keyword research and you know, let's just define keyword research as the language of the market, right? What are your potential customers typing into YouTube when they're looking up stuff? That's keyword research, right? Right. Where do you go first? So for me, I go to the Google keyword planner tool. It, it used to be free. Um, but what they did recently is they, they don't unlock the information. They give ranges now. They go, oh, this keyword gets between 100 and 1,000 searches a month, which doesn't really give you exact data. Um, but the, the little hack around that, the workaround is running just a really small AdWords campaign. And once you run like $10 in AdWords, they generally will unlock the information. So uh, for me, my account is unlocked. So I just go in there and you can plug in your keywords and they show you the information. There's also another tool that I use called uh, Longtail Pro, which actually pulls in Google's data, but they also analyze the data, compare it to the results that you're going to be competing against and they'll tell you how competitive a keyword is and different things like that. Um, so I use both of those tools. There are other things that we do too. Like we'll go into our analytics on our YouTube channel and we will look at the videos that are getting searched. We'll look at the keywords that are people are using to find those videos and I'll go down that list and I'll look and say, does that keyword actually describe what's in that video? And if it doesn't, I'll actually make another video on that topic because I know people are, are searching for it. So for example, if I made a video about, um, you know, Los Angeles custom home builder and I realized people are typing in Los Angeles contractor to find that video, I go, well, that's not totally what it's about. Maybe I need to create a Los Angeles contractor video because I know they're searching, people are searching for it and my video is not directly related to that. So um, maybe I'll create a video on that. So one, I get a higher ranking because it's directly related. Google will pick up on that. And two, so that I get higher conversions because when someone's searching Los Angeles contractor, I can create a video that's customized to Los Angeles contractor. So my conversions are gonna be a lot higher because I can now speak to that, that keyword in the video. So that's generally the two places that we'll go for, for keywords. So we buy and sell raw land. Mm -hmm. Given our niche, how would you start? to market raw land on YouTube? Okay, so the first thing I, I would ask is who, who are you trying to attract? Are you, are you teaching people how to do it or are you looking for people that are trying to sell land or who's your I, customer? I, I teach people, but I'm, let's forget about me. Okay. Um, we're looking for customers that want to buy our raw land on, let's say, easy owner financing. Okay, so the first thing I would do is just do the general lies keywords like the local ones and and do some research on there that where people are typing in like things for land for sale or how to sell land in x y and z like los angeles or whatever but then once those are done i would start actually going for questions that people are searching like how do i buy land what's the best way to buy affordable land um what's the process of buying property and start creating videos and answer questions and, and what will happen is you start becoming the authority at the end of each video, um, you have some kind of call to action and we like to use what I call the RPS recap problem solution. So if someone was searching how to buy land, um, obviously they're probably looking at buying land, which would be the perfect person for you to attract. And then at the very end of the video, you explain the process of buying land. Uh, you could do the recap problem solution, which would be like, okay, we just taught you the three ways or the three steps to buying land. The problem is you need to know how to find the lowest cost. So you're not paying more. So we create a problem and we give the solution. So we have a map 
or a list of the lowest cost land for sale in Los Angeles. If you want it, click the link below and, and go and get it. So recap problem solution. So once you start answering questions, you're going to get people um, either in your area or all over the place looking for land. Like you, you find the, the questions they're searching when they're trying to buy land and then just do video after video after video after video for all of those uh, questions and then have some kind of call to action that gets on a list or to take the next step with you by using the recap problem solution. How important is quality in video production? It's not really that important. I mean, if you're filming a video that just does not look like super grainy and the audio is like super static and crackly, it's probably not the best thing, but like just having your phone, the quality that your phone will get with a $20 mobile lav mic is going to be fine to get started. Uh, for us, I run a video production and video marketing company and we use like a $600 DSLR camera for all of our stuff. Um, as long as the video's in HD and the audio is decent, you don't really need anything else. Um, my story is kind of similar to yours where the first couple of videos of mine are cringeworthy and I, <laughs> I basically put a sheet on the wall behind me and used as a green screen and I recorded I was on my knees recording them and it was because it was from the waist up. I didn't have much room in the, in the room I was in and my tripod was a pile of books and then I just had like a $300 HD camera. Um, and that video, like if you go and search video marketing, keyword video marketing in YouTube, it's still ranked number one after like three or four years. Uh, and it makes me cringe every time. The quality is awful, but the content is, is there. The content is of value and the content is what people are looking for. And it keeps me ranked because they land, they search that keyword, they land on the video, they watch the video all the way through and Google and YouTube look at that and go, wow, okay, people are searching this keyword, they're landing on this video and they're watching this video more than everyone else's video. This is a good result, let's keep it ranked. So even though the quality is not great, I still hold the number one spot and it gets seen every single day. So uh, quality of video, I would say put more emphasis on the content, being concise, getting to the point and just making sure that you're giving them what they want and not necessarily what you think that they need to know. Just give them the, the value that they are looking for and they will watch your video all the way through. So, um, so, so I, I, I create a video, you know, I, I talk on the video, I upload it to YouTube. I give it uh, kind of a, the headline using the keywords that I want. I talk about that in the, in the description as well. Is there any value to, because I know like Google will go through or YouTube will go through and they will kind of listen to what I'm saying. They'll translate it and use some of that for SEO. But is there any value to then me having someone go through there, listen to that video, and then in the description put in there the transcript of what I'm saying? So obviously YouTube doesn't know what the video is about. So they rely on text related stuff, which is like what you said, it's very important to make sure that the keywords in the title, you have it in the description, but we only have a limited amount of spots to associate text with our video. So we really want to take advantage of that. So when you upload an actual transcript, like you can do that, you can put in a closed caption thing, upload what's said in the video um, in the advanced settings of your video. So that's one area. But if you take that same transcript and put it in your description, you're kind of wasting a text area that you can associate with your video because they already know, like, they already know what's in the video because you already uploaded the transcript as the closed caption part. So my recommendation is to actually write almost like a mini blog post about what's in the video in your description um, because that's a really good area to associate more text with the video. But what we're also realizing now and the biggest shift we're seeing in rankings is that engagement, watch time, how people find the video and how long they watch it uh, are really the bigger factors towards ranking right now. So they actually monitor the keyword being searched, which result they land on and how long they stay on that result. And so if someone's searching a keyword lands on your video and they're out of there in five seconds, they're not going to rank you because they want the best content coming up. So what we're realizing is yes, like make sure you have all of the text associated with your video in the right spots. Like if you make sure the keywords in the title, if the keywords not in the title, you're not going to rank even if your engagement's really high. So make sure the text in place, but really how you construct the video, how people are landing on the video, uh, and how they engage with the video are becoming some of the best ranking factors. And we have videos that are up on YouTube right now that have been there for three years 
and I haven't, I haven't touched them yet. They're still ranking number one because I have three years of people coming in, searching keywords, landing my videos and watching them all the way through. And they go like, this is still the best result for, for this keyword. So, um, so we're going to keep it ranked. All right, Brandon, I'm going to give you the toughest questions you've ever had in a podcast interview. Okay. Let's, let's have it. All right. You don't know a lot about Scott and I, but you can assume we've been doing video marketing for a while on YouTube. Yeah. Tell us something we don't know about video marketing. Um, I would say video marketing is transitioning towards using all social media platforms. It's not just YouTube anymore. So for me, I used all just YouTube. Um, but now what we do with our content is we actually divide our content up into several pieces and use it on Facebook. Right now with Facebook, we have a huge opportunity that you don't get very often. And you can get video views for as low as a penny or sometimes even less. So every YouTube video we have, we'll actually look at that and go, where's a 30 second chunk that can hold its own? That's a good piece of content. And we'll divide a single YouTube video up into like seven or 10 different individual clips, put them on Facebook, and then we will actually go and run them as a paid ad. And every $10 that we're spending, you know, for paying a penny per view, it comes out to like a thousand views or something like that. So not only are we getting more exposure for very low cost, uh, we're getting in front of people that never heard of us before. We're warming up traffic. And then the other cool thing that Facebook allows you to do is they allow you to then remarket to those audiences. So they, they, they monitor who's watching the video, how long they watch the video, and then let you run ads to those people so that you can, you know, do whatever you want to do, send them down a sales funnel, get them on an email list or, or whatever. And the same thing with Instagram. We then take that piece and put it on Instagram. Um, and it all works together. Like we can put it on Facebook and we can put it on Instagram and we can put the main version on YouTube. And you have a couple different options uh, with those little previews of 30 second clips. You can either tell them to go watch your YouTube video or get on an email list or join a Facebook group. Um, but one of the tips that I have a business partner named Sunny Lernarduzzi, she gave me this, this tip where she'll actually upload her video onto YouTube. Then the same day, upload a mini clip that links to her YouTube video. So what happens is she's getting all of her YouTube subscribers watching the video. She's getting her email list to go watch the video. Then she's getting her Facebook and Instagram people to go watch the video by giving them that like 30 second clip saying you want to watch the full version, go over to YouTube. And she has some of the number one rankings for some of the hardest keywords in our niche because of this one strategy. So within the first 24 hours, she's utilizing all of these platforms to drive it all to YouTube to like boost the YouTube video up. And then since it's a good piece of content, once it's ranked, it stays ranked because people are watching it all the way through. So um, I would say the biggest thing is start using multiple platforms to, to all work together. Scott Todd. Omnipresence, man, be everywhere. Yep. Yeah, but what about, you know, Scott and I will often do a live stream, whether it's Periscope or Facebook Live. Really, we've gone more to Facebook Live. I tried doing YouTube Live, like I would use OBS and I would stream everywhere at once. Yeah. Eh, didn't work so great. So right now I'm putting all my eggs in one Facebook basket to stream live. But I could take that live stream and put it up on YouTube or wherever, yeah. right? What do, you, what do you recommend as far as live streaming or am I just, you know, me or Scott and I wasting our time? No, I think live streaming on Facebook is super important. And in the algorithm of Facebook's newsfeed, they boost live streams. So I think you should be using it. They just enabled, like literally last week, the ability to actually boost the live stream as you're doing it. So you can run it as an ad as you're actually live streaming, which is really cool. But what we do is we even take the recording of it and run that as an ad, as an ad as well. And, uh, Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Can you guys hear that background noise or no? Yeah, a little bit. That's okay. Okay. Um, so, so we will take the live stream and we will run it as an ad itself. But then we even take it a step further where we do the same thing I do with my YouTube videos where I'll take the live stream and I will actually chop little segments of it and then add. Like if I'm on a rant, I'm just rolling and rolling and rolling like Gary Vaynerchuk style. And I'll actually take that clip, put some music behind it, upload it like a day later or two days later or a week later or whatever, run it as an ad. And then uh, we will then get that in front of more people too. So my thing is more about like repurposing, reusing, and then running it on Facebook as an ad because 
we have such a unique opportunity right now to get video views for, for pennies. And because they're trying to push video, no one's really using it. So what they do is they just reward you with really cheap video views. And I'm like, I'm going to take advantage of this now while no one, like everyone else is still trying to figure it out. I'm just going to build my audience as fast as I can before the price per video view starts going up. I love it. I love it. Well, now, Brandon, we're going to put you on the spot. You've, you've, the mentorship has been amazing, right? Yeah. I've, I'm, you know, we've already increased our video IQ by tenfold, but we're going to ask you for one more tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? So uh, right now, the, the, the best thing you can do to upload your videos the right way is actually on our website. So that's the number one guide that I can tell people to go and get right now that we have available. Um, but the one major tip that I stress to people the most is that video, and I kind of touched on it already, video is about consistency and it's not about selling. The worst thing you can do is put a video out there that's pushing your products, pushing your stuff, pushing, 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 pushing. But if you can learn how to effectively and, and be concise with your content and add value up front, you can build a massive audience really, really fast. And then the key thing to turning that audience into sales is to get them somewhere where you can pull them, survey them and ask them what they're struggling with. And then you just listen to what they're telling you and then create a product or service around that. And for lack of a better term, it's like shooting fish in a barrel because they tell you exactly how to sell to them. And so we've, we've had massive product launches, built stuff from thin air and sold it to our audience because of just listening to what they're telling us. So um, if anything, I would say that is the biggest tip that I can give, give the audience. I love it. I love it. Scott Todd from landamoto.com. What's your tip of the week? Mark, since we're talking about video, and I know how much you love Voxer. I've got a video Voxer for you. Ready? I'm ready. It's called Walkie. W-A-L-K-Y dot I-O. Walkie dot I-O. And basically, it's ideal for video communicating with your team. So think of like Slack with video. Uh, create a channel for your team. Invite your team to it. You can broadcast whenever you want. They don't have to pick up the phone or anything. You just leave the, the message there so that it's there for your team when they connect. And pretty cool. Huh. Very cool. Very, very cool. I love it. I love it. All right. That's a great tip. Start talking. No plugins, no downloads, no hassle, quick text, live photo, screen sharing, connect instantly. Is this going to destroy Voxer? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, see, for right now, it's just a desktop app, right? So it's not on your phone yet. Oh, uh, okay. So okay. Right, right now, it's not going to kill Voxer, but who knows where they're going. Okay. All right. So, you know, as far as your team, then, this is really good for your team. If you really want to talk about something. Yeah. It's, it's like, okay, it's like Voxer for teams. Right. So like I, I'm working on a project right now where, you know, it's a lot of back and forth through email. And so what I'll do is I'll create videos in like Zoom um, and then give them the link to it so they can see what I'm talking about. But this could literally, I'm going to test it out, but maybe I could do, I don't know if I can do a screen share or not, but at least I can communicate and show stuff uh, in almost in live to maybe it's one last step I have to do to put it into Zoom. Wow. Okay. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Try it out. All right. Checking it out right now. Okay. And then my tip of the week is the best tip of the week because it is going to possibly take your business to the next level. At least you're, you're marketing the next level for sure. And what's interesting about it is that it ain't going to break the bank. It is sold with video.com because let's face it. Um, we can always make more money. We can't get more time. So if you're doing this stuff yourself, um, you better know your effective hourly rate before you start doing it. Um, I'd rather go to a guy like Brandon who knows what the hell he's doing and just give him the content and let him do it. Let him do the marketing. Let him do the SEO. Let him do the production. And boom, get her done. And, you know, 
just know that in the end, it's going to, you know, you make a 10 X, 20 X return on all that. Um, it's not going to happen overnight because marketing doesn't happen overnight, but it will happen. And, um, Scott Todd, just so you know, I'm taking full advantage of soulsvideo.com and I want to take priority. Okay. I know, I know Scott's going to want to do it too, but like between the two of us, I overpay for everything. Scott's going to negotiate and like, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> see, see how the scarcity mentality already seeps into the end of the podcast. Yeah. It's perfect. You, you know how to market as well. You know, the scarcity angle of it. I love it. Mark, you're breaking up. Brandon cannot hear you. He only hears me. Maybe we can get a two for deal. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, we might have maybe. to kill this interview completely. Just you and I. <laughs> I, I know, I know. All right, so go to soulofvideo.com and uh, and learn more there. And uh, I do want to remind everybody: look, the only way, the only way to get the quality of guests like a Brandon Lucero to come on the Art of Passive Income podcast is if you just do us three little favors: you got to subscribe, you got to rate. And you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of your review to support at thelandgeek.com. I'm going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. Brandon Lucero, are we good? Yeah, I'm good. I appreciate you guys having me on. Thank you so much for being on. Scott Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. I was just messing around about the, the other thing before. Not really. Brandon, <laughs> let's stay on. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right, ready? One. Two, three, let, let freedom ring. God, that wasn't good. It's like, I don't know. Brandon, a scale of one to 10 nah, on the geek he's level, hanging what, out. what would you give? I don't have anything to compare it to, but on a geek level of geekiness, I'd give it a nine. All right, there you go. Not bad. All right, thanks everybody. <laughs> Scott gives it a zero. See everybody next time.